Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and here's the latest update from Ukraine, by the way I'm from Ukraine myself. Let's go to the Kharkiv, the best uh, spot for Ukrainian army so far because we have the counter-attack operation ongoing, we're very close to Russian border here and probably in nearby days we're gonna reach it, however Russia is building their defense forces over here near to the Kazacha Lopen. They want to keep this place under their control and uh, today we freed the Ternova, uh, we over here and we little by little going all the way across uh, this river to reach uh, actually the Russian border. Kharkiv I would say is more or less uh, secure for civilians. I have a uh, friends here who live just nearby to me. They are from Kharkiv and they think to go back to Kharkiv next week. But still we have a couple of the villages like Dergachi and uh, Sirkuni that were under attack by Russian missiles and artillery. The situation in Kharkiv also can influence the other part of uh, front lines. We have the Azum, it's the main base now for Russia. They concentrate more than 20,000 troops over there, tanks, etc., aviation. And today I heard from Ukrainian officials that we are starting the counterattack operation over here. So it will be fantastic to follow that one. So probably gonna go to Uzum uh, using this big road over here and probably gonna go to Kupensk to cut the supply line towards Izum. If we ambush the supply lines towards Izum, there will be no any problem, no any threat uh, to Kramatorsk and Slavansk cities. So I'm really focused on that one and we'll see how the situation will ongo in nearby two or three days. You may say that the Balaklia town is the best spot to start the offensive operation, the counter-attack of Ukrainian army, but no my friends, we have a river very near we don't have the big roads to actually take the balaclia not really not really probably it's better to take this road all the way and this road all the way to kupensk and we have lots of m triple sevens in our army and just recently our minister of the foreign affairs kuleba met with anthony blinken and together they say that we have many of the m triple sevens artillery systems already on the front lines it's the good thing my friends to have at least 30 up to 40 kilometers range compared to russia well russia artillery systems range up to 18 kilometers so of course we'll have more advantage on them in the eastern part of ukraine we have izum as well over here it, this time it is here and russia tries to reach uh, this uh, area they want to take it near to Adamovka so yesterday they had some kind of success near to this highway uh, to Slavansk but today they were stopped by Ukrainian army this place this place uh, Alexandrovka constantly under attack by Russian troops but they stuck they really stuck on that front lines they are not moving forward what we have here the bridge is destroyed and yeah i really like this tactical chart my friends i'll put the link in the video description for you to check the chart yourself and what is concerning me the most as usual is the Severodonetsk and lisa chance russia has some of the success near to this river I saw the deep state map and that shows that uh, Russian troops already near to this river. I don't know, we have lots of information coming from the front lines. I don't know whom I should trust. Uh, so they are unable to cross this uh, river. We were able to bomb this bridge and Russia has no any chance to cross uh, this uh, part near to Lysychansk and Severodonetsk at least for now we are holding this airport we built quite huge defense lines and they are losing their forces of course we also have losses but if you offensive if you're going to attack somebody usually you lose three times more personnel compared to the side which is defend uh, but let's go a little bit to the south and we have uh, papasna village that is under the control by russian troops and they want to go north uh, they sent many troops again uh, they actually cut our defense lines over here and they want to go on a top. I don't think they have lots of chances to circle this area. They have not a lot of forces here in the south, more forces here in the north. They still have some of the fighting going on. I don't know what they want. They, of course, obviously want to take Severodonetsk and Lysychansk, but with the forces they have probably 
Probably no. The southeast part of Ukraine, let's zoom in, we have the Donetsk that was occupied by pro-Russian separatists, so obviously Russia, and they still want to take Avdivka, still want to take Marinka, but unsuccessful. Uh, near to Zaporizhia we have, uh, near to Orikhiv, uh, so we have the fighting there, Hulai Pole is constantly under the shells under the attack by Russian artillery, but still unsuccessful. So we have lots of troops there and this uh, line just stuck for Russia. So we heard the rumors uh, like I think a couple of weeks ago or maybe one month ago that Russia would start the biggest offensive operation uh, since the World War II. But what I see, they just split uh, their troops all, all over the place around Ukraine. Yes, they had to cancel the offensive operation near to Kiev, Sumy, Chernigiv. But still, they have lots of forces you know, split everywhere and they cannot concentrate on one task. That is why they are now retreating from the Kharkiv. And from what I heard from the information from Russian sources, they sent some troops from Izum to north of the Kharkiv uh, to secure the place near to the Russian border. So I don't know their main goal for now, probably they're gonna reach uh, Severodonetsk and Lysychansk, at least I see it like that, it's more realistic target for Russia, but still not enough forces. It was the ratio of five Russian troops against one Ukrainian on that side, now we have like three against one so they're losing their troops quite a lot and we had the information from our chief uh, command of the army that we're gonna mobilize more men to fight for ukraine and total number of our army would increase to one million troops just imagine one million troops against 80,000 troops that Russia used to offense Ukraine. Now Russia needs at least 5 million people to capture the big part of Ukraine to have the 5 to 1 ratio, at least. If you have the talented generals, if you have the state-of-art weapons, 5 to 1 ratio is the minimum for you to attack to reach the country. But Russia has nothing from it. They just lose in this war, my friends. And with the weapons coming, of course, we're gonna invert this war against Russia. And believe me, this summer you'll see massive counterattack of Ukrainian army all over the place, all over the front lines. Will be very interesting to review them with you. And now, my friends, if you want to support this channel, please press the like and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you can, you may join our Patreon crew to have the access for the some of the perks from my side, or you can support this channel through the PayPal. All the links I put in the video description just below. And I wish you a peaceful sky wherever you are. Have a great time.